<laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. My bad. Uh, I meant to be on this on this stream scene. Uh, on OBS, I was on the ending one. Uh, my bad. It can look awkward as hell. Start of the world when it's the stream ending. It's only been like two minutes. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. That is not what I meant to do. So, happy Monday. New beginning of the week. Uh, hell of a week. Hell of a week coming up. We got, if you guys didn't know, <laughs> if you're not up to date on Steam, uh, the Steam sale is coming up this Thursday. It starts this Thursday. So uh, I hope you guys got your wallets ready because, boy, every time this year, every time this year I'm looking at my wallet like, boy, am I am I going to survive? Am I going to, you know, is food worth it? Maybe I can just substitute food with games. Maybe that'll work. And it never does. It never does. But hey, at least we had fun while doing it. Uh, so, uh, a few things first. A few things. Let me just uh, actually go into some stuff before we do. So, yes. Originally, I wanted to play uh, Helldivers today. That was the original plan, right? However, 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 however. Right now, Helldivers, at least on PC, where I'm where I'm playing right now, because as you guys know, no PS5 for me. Uh, Helldivers right now is not, it's not good right now. And it's not, it has nothing to do with the, uh, the gameplay, well, sort of, you know, like the balancing and all that, it's great now, it's great, weapons are good now, stratagems are good, uh, enemy spawning is good, you know, nothing is like, there's no heavies, at least as far as, as, far as I experienced, there weren't heavies just spawning out your asshole constantly, and everything seemed okay gameplay wise, right? However, the stability is bad. It is so bad. Like, after almost, at the end of almost every single uh, mission, after every single extraction, and then going in, even going into a mission, you're just stuck in a loading screen, or you just crash. There's no in between. It's either one or the other. You'll get one mission done, or you'll get into one mission, and then that's it. Done. And it's happening kind of constantly at the moment. And that's not even to mention the uh, frames at the moment. Because of the frames, it's still there. With frames just dropping by pressing the menu button. Escape, obviously, if you're on PC. Or literally just going into the main menu. And it's just, all of a sudden, 20, 30 FPS gone like that. And it's not a hardware issue either. We, like, we've, I've had, we've had people... On here saying you know they've got 30 60s 40 70s it doesn't matter what graphics card what cpu is if you're, your drivers are all up to date all that everyone on pc seems to be experiencing the same thing where performance has just been shot it's not been good it's the game is the game itself now balance wise is in a good shape but stability wise it's not good at all right now it really needs to i don't know just every single Every single patch comes with something new. And it's a good patch overall. I mean, this was the big one, but... Yeah, they need, they really got to fix this right now. Because still... Like I said, you guys, this game is fun. So fun. Once you're in a mission, so, so fun. But it, it really just kills your mood when you get to the end... You know, when you get to the end screen and you're just stuck there and, the, you know, not able to do anything. Or even before you start a mission, you get all your, you get all your boys together, right? to finally do some missions and then you're just stuck in a loading screen and then two people's games crashes and then the two people there are left stuck in the loading screen forever it's not good you don't really need to fix the stability on that because i want to play this game it's so much fun it's so much fun but it's just not i'm just not able to play right now and i don't really want to don't really want to do that today because it has that sort of i mean i mean yeah it's definitely soured my mood so i'm probably not going to play until like they actually patch it so I mean, so it should be every, well, 
they did say it's not going to be every Tuesday anymore. They're probably going to do like longer ones, but hopefully this one's going to be like a, a quick one. Hopefully they actually, you know, roll out a sort of hot fix and usually it's on a Tuesday. I mean, I just checked my Steam and there's no update today. So hopefully tomorrow they do it to fix the crashes and stuff and the loading screens because it's just a bit much at the moment. It is, really is. Ah, uh, other than that, Solid game, still a solid game. Please go play it. Oh, what's that's all mini nukes? It has to be. Yeah, yeah. Black is the mini. It's not grey because grey is the smoke. If it's black, it's all mini nukes, isn't it? Let me just. I'm. Oh my god. Yeah, it's all mini nukes. No, it's smoke. Wait, what? It's smoke. I thought... Oh, wait, no. It, yeah, this is more grey. Yeah, the mini nukes are like pure black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering. I was like, wait, so that's... Five nukes is a bit much. You might get five smokes. That's likely, but... Uh, oh, yeah. The other thing... So, with the supply lines, right? Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, okay. So we get to see the supply lines now with this. So hopefully people should be able to guess, right? So right now, we just need to keep these five planets safe, which is perfectly fine. So what this guy's saying, right? So how the supply lines work. What is Vandal? What is Vandal? 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 Yeah, what's trying to say? Stacking on Ingmar. Thirty-six. Do 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 do. Do do No, Vandal on yes. Yeah, really, we should be on. Yeah, so the supply lines, how they work, right, is if someone is, uh, if the enemy are attacking, if the enemy is attacking one of the planets, say, for example, like this, like Vandalon, uh, you know, the automatons are coming from Vandalon to attack Ingmar. Really, we should be focusing more on Vandalon, because then if we take Vandalon while they are still trying to attack this, it shuts off their supply lines, and we get to defend two planets at once. It's how the supply lines work. They can't keep attacking if they haven't got the supply lines, which is really why you should go for the source planet rather than the defense planet. Unless obviously it's like super desperate. But really, supply lines are a very basic understanding once you once you get them. I think there does need to be a bit of a tutorial just for like general players who aren't on the Reddit and the Discord. Because the average player will just be like, all right, I'm going to just play wherever I feel like, which is fine. That's absolutely within their right to do that. 110% is within their right to do that. But if we want to, like, get it through to people how to play this game and how the supply lines work, there really should be some sort of small tutorial at the start for them to understand. Because, you know, not everyone's on Reddit. And not everyone's on the uh, Discord either. So... Do, 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 do. What else? What else is up with the red? What are we saying? Uh, between these two, who'd win? Hmm. I mean, I feel like it's pretty obvious. The factory strider, isn't it? At least in my book, the, it's very, very obvious. It's the factory strider because uh, the range and the amount of firepower. I mean, you, you barely even need the uh, heavy cannon. These. These auto cannons, they shred. They shred. Uh, but how? To be fair, to be fair, to be fair. Now, these are. I'm pretty sure these are only like light or medium armor penetration. I don't. I'm not quite sure. I. So maybe, if the fight was like started off close range, maybe the Bell Titan. But at least in my book, it feels like nine times out of ten, maybe four out of five. If we're being nice to the ball titan, uh, it's going to be the factory stride that wins majority of the time. 
It doesn't really obvious. Plus, you, if you consider the factory stride as well with the extra, uh, was it the Devastators? That spawn from underneath it as well. I feel like this is very, like, very one-sided towards factory strider winning. Du, 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 du. Okay. The Illuminate. Uh, the Illuminate finally joined the war and we get a new enemy to fight. The new front is only one quarter of the map. Oh. <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, like I said, if, it would be a hell of a way to separate yourself from the first game. But if I'm honest, they've already separated themselves from the first game by a lot by being so, so different gameplay wise. That I don't feel like they need to add a fourth faction, if I'm honest. It would be nice and it would be more than anyone would expect. So I don't, you know, you know, I don't expect it and I don't need it, but it would be that would be a hell of a thing for them to be doing, to introduce a fourth faction, you know? The thing I would like, so though, I, and I think I now prefer, is if we actually manage to get the other factions fighting each other as well. Because right now, it is just us basically 1v3ing. Well, 1v2ing at the moment, and then eventually 1v3ing once the Illuminate come in. And like I said, the one thing I, re I really want is if we can like push the bugs and the bots to fighting each other or eventually get the Illuminate to be fighting the bugs or the bots as well. So that way we can sort of be a bit more opportunistic, you know? Like, and it would provide, I feel like that would be, that would provide like way, way more different mission strategies for people to use. Because all of a sudden, could people have like, terminate builds people have the bot builds obviously but when you're now fighting two of those factions at once or you know if it somehow manages to happen three of those factions at once now you really have to coordinate with your with your team and how to fight off multiple factions in multiple play styles you know because now and then you can even you know draw them to fight each other create some sort of distraction you know maybe you can get a you can get a factory strider to follow you no, no, no. Or maybe you can get like, you know, some, uh, some bar titans, get some chargers, you know, and kite them along into a uh, heavy automaton like fortress or something like that. There are some really interesting strategies you could use if we had the capability to like get multiple factions to fight each other, you know, get the bugs and bots fighting and then eventually get them to be fighting the Illuminate as well. I think that'd be crazy. It'd be a lot. It'd be a lot, but that's something I'd really, really like. That'd be so cool. Uh, you, know, you know, this is very much wishy-washy territory, so I'm not expecting it, but damn, it'll be cool. <laughs> uh, all right, what's next? Add gambit planets above... God, what? That's liberation. The liberation of this planet will abruptly end an enemy campaign on a neighboring... Hmm. Hmm. Interesting idea. Uh, the recoilless rifle is actually called the Devastator. Uh, they probably didn't use Devastator because it's a type of enemy. That's probably the reason why, but hmm, we knew that. To be fair, recoilless rifle does seem like a... It always seemed like a strange name considering that it's a rocket launcher, not a, not a rifle, but hey. I'm not going to be one to question it. Uh, average held dive experience. Let's go in and out. 40 minute mission. 45 minute later. Every time. Every time. Hell dive mission and then all of a sudden you're just trying to outlast <laughs> like the uh, the hunters and shit or you're trying to outlast the factory stride that's somehow sneaking around to you in the last few minutes on the extraction. I days. Yeah, okay, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. I wonder if they're going to have the same thing I do when they, if they should like show, if they start a mission up. Da, da, da. Okay, so limits, uh, yeah. On ultra, high, 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 high. Do, do, do. Now put it down to low. Max FPS 
62. Jesus. Also, is this how bad this game can look on low? Yeah, I feel like even for low, this is a bit disgustingly low. I feel like modern games even... Jesus. <laughs> but yeah. The FPS is definitely a joke right now. You press escape and it's just like, nope. Nope. You're still gonna get 50 FPS. <laughs> Uh, Summer Offensive, so Phase 1, take Trigon Sector by securing Vandalore 4, Ostoy 2, and Chiposa 4. Chiposa? Chiposa 4. Okay. Uh, Emir Sector, secure Planet Mesa to gain, regain control of this. Okay, okay, I see the plan. Uh, close, oh yeah, you close the matter, but yeah. Uh, phase three. Regain control set by securing plant Marfuck, Martail, Charon, and Chuck Jesus. That's a lot of planets to take at once. In phase four, take Chu and Menkent. I might be real with you, Chief. I don't see that happening for a very simple reason. And it's called <laughs> Bug Major Orders. <laughs> Even though this would be cool as hell, I guarantee you that bug major order will be coming in like the next week or so. I guarantee it, one hundred percent it will. Because any time there's like they like to switch it up. They can't have it be on one side. Of, they can't have mission order the uh, major orders be on one side of the galaxy. They'll usually switch it up every like week or two. I mean, there was that one time where they did push it for like the way they only did automaton. Uh, major orders for a while so there is that however that was like a while ago and that was i'm pretty sure that was during the time when we were actually we actually got rid of the automatons as well so highly unlikely that uh, something like this will be happening just because bug major orders will happen and also people get tired of playing the bots more than they do the bugs myself included now and i used to be i used to be way more of a uh, bot bot main myself personally i actually preferred fighting bots at some point in my life weirdly but now i prefer fighting bugs du, 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 du. <laughs> all right buddy okay incendiaries and am i colorblind is that is that dark blue or is that i'm confused okay comments please save me those are definitely the incendiaries because they're orange. Oh, so it, okay, it is the nuke. Okay. That's not bad. Too many nukes and three incendiaries. Napalms, I mean, yeah. Solid. And uh, now we are back. Uh, yeah, okay, we've gone back to where I basically have before. Yeah, peace performance is disgrace. Yeah, everyone says that. Do, 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 do. All right, let's go to YouTube quickly before because I do also want to check out, like I said, the title's called Silly Season for a reason because I want to talk about some Arsenal stuff. But let's quickly check on trending. I don't think there's anything that's been trending that I care about. House of the Dragon, eh. I haven't really I haven't watched House of Dragon this season yet. Don't know why. I like the first season. I just haven't started this season yet. I should really catch up on that. Uh, da, 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 no, no, nothing really. Da, huh? Uh, oh, oh, guys, guys, can you take a guess at who won? If you're an F1 fan, take a guess at who won. Take a guess. Take a big guess at who it could possibly be. You'll never guess. You'll never guess. <sighs> do, 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 do. Max for shopper. <sighs> My days. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Fortnite? Nah. Uh, VTubers. <laughs> Ecuador, Venezuela. Oh my god, Copa America, yeah. I haven't watched any of the Copa America games. I don't know how it's doing. 
I remember I all I know was that Argentina won two nil, and now I guess I know Venezuela won two one. I should really watch that as well. I should really watch Copa America, but it takes place at like one a.m. here my time, so it's not really <laughs> it's not really ideal. I'm already tired enough from watching the Euros, so it's not really ideal for me watching uh, two international tournaments at the same time when one of them takes place at a decent time afternoon afternoon to evenings and then the other one takes place at pretty much midnight or later and <laughs> spoon I guess that's it hmm that's odd yeah, let me check IG and uh, just because well, there's any trailers around because it's the only reason to go to IG anymore just because they have released all the trailers. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, Nosferatu. I heard about this. Supercharge your business with the all new Shopify. Yeah. Nosferatu. Come to me. Come to me. Hear my call. Come to me. Ooh. Robert Eggers. What's he made? Professor. My dreams grow darker. Does evil come from within us? You were within the game. Beyond. Coming to you, my child. Christmas. <laughs> iPhone 15 in a mouse case. Oh, well, that's a that's a sound that sounds like a great Christmas film. Nosferatu. Du, 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 see. <gasps> oh, Space Marine. Using Photoshop's new generative fill feature, uh, I can add some lightning. <laughs> plant Kadaku. So this is the main planet where we're headed to. Titus and his battle brothers are deployed in planet Kodaku. Help the Austro military and push back the tyranny of the Kodaku is a jungle world, infested with muddy forests and swamps. Ooh, rough terrain to deadly flora and fauna. Swamps, what is this? A Miyazaki game? Jesus. And scattered Imperial, and scattered Imperial fortresses. Yeah, these ridiculous cannons, yep, yeah, Warhammer. Quote oh. Kodaku, then. Seamus. Oh, it looks so weird. It's the 9th. Don't pre-order it. No pre-ordering games. Never. Please never do that. Don't do it. Don't pre-order games. Do 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 See, Marvel Rivals. Spider Islands? Spider Islands didn't... Wait, what? Spider... Spider Islands never took place in a... Um, listen, Spider Island was an old arc, but it never took place in Tokyo. That was very... That was a really straight-up New York arc. It never took place in Tokyo, huh? What are you talking about? You have a killer or am I misremembering the Spider Island arc? conversion rate? Not so killer. Oh, 2099. Oh, okay. 
Oh, I still don't remember. Oh. Okay, I'm confused. I... Thank you for the follow. It's going alright, just watching some trailers and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I don't, yeah, like I said, I don't remember the Spider Islands taking place in 2099. Then again, I don't really keep up with any of the 2099 stories in the comics. So. Cool butterfly. Empty. AI is such a big sort of <laughs> Super Spider Evil Mega Corp. <laughs> Father? Father! Oh, we're going to hate these guys? Come on, guys. What do we do now? We stop talking and start smashing. That's what. All over again. Rogue like. Yeah, we got we got Hades, but with TMNT characters. I need to collect more data, whatever it takes. Nice. Your family is doomed as it had. You, your brothers, your pathetic fool of a father. Oh my god. Why is it showing up so early? Stop. No way, IGN. Fuck's sake. Why? Is that annoying? Shopify's point. Uh, have you played the game? Yes, I do play games. Just uh, not today. Just don't really feel like playing any games today. So, no games today. But I should be playing games uh, next stream. Hopefully, we'll be hell divers if they fix the uh, crashing and stability overall. That'll be Wednesday though. Not today. I'ma just chill. Chill out today. Do 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 do. Final shape. Uh boy, any Destiny fans out here? <laughs> that was the final shape. I've heard very many good things. And it's meant to be like an end. Well, it's still continuing. Destiny's still continuing, but it's meant to be like a big end to the sort of the current saga, I guess you could say. I heard a lot of people like it. Let's see. Do I don't think there's anything else. Uh, is there anything else interesting? Oh, Shimigami Tensei Five review. Oh, Ven yeah, is good. <laughs> is good is what it is. I think. Wow, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the launch. Beyond Good and Evil Twentieth Anniversary Edition. <laughs> So is uh, they ever gonna come out with that Beyond Good and Evil two or no? Doesn't seem like a doesn't seem like we've heard anything from that game for a while, huh? <laughs> Development hell, that game. It's done. It's finished. It's never coming out. It's never gonna exist. It was never real in the first place. <gasps> oh no, gameplay. Oh, once gameplay. When's the gameplay? Yep, still no gameplay from uh, Dune Awakening. Damn it. Damn it. Uh, I mean, it's probably going to be... It's probably going to play very similar to how Conan plays. Just with a more sci-fi twist, obviously. But I wish we actually got some gameplay to see if it's you know, worth it, you know, to see what the big differences are. Because overall, I can probably guess, like I said, it's going to play a lot like Conan. But I'd like to see some of the bigger differences, but we haven't seen much. We've seen very small, very, very small tidbits of gameplay, not any actual 
true gameplay yet, which is a shame. I really wish I could. I'm actually excited for Dune. 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 Uh, okay, now we're back to we're now back to the Nintendo Direct. Okay, that should be it. Um, we'll go, actually we'll go back to Reddit in a bit, but first. Actually, no, let's go to Reddit. Let's continue Reddit. Another thing I want to talk about. El Finale. I was also considered... Whoa, 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 whoa. Leaked gameplay for the Nintendo Switch port of the game. Yeah, no chance. No chance. Obviously, I get to joke, but still... <laughs> no way they bring it there. Nah, that's vile. <laughs> that is vile. <laughs> Nah, nah. Oh my God. Heavy, heavy, medium. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's pretty much the, pretty much it. To buff the ninety three R, dual wheel pistol. Hmm. Hmm. You know, could work. Could be cool. The finals Monaco. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, this skin, it's so cursed. It's so, so cursed. Listen, the actual outfit, like this, uh, that's this is obviously that one. That one's a fan-made one. But like the anime uh, skin itself, it looks good overall when you put it on, like when it's all together, it looks good. It's meant to have uh, this hair, the anime style hair. That's, uh, that's the one. But when it, <laughs> when you combine it with like the normal clothes or like normal hair, it looks cursed. It, I don't like it. Like I said, when it's just together in the one skin that it's meant to be in, looks fantastic, absolutely brilliant. But mixing and matching it, nah, not for me. It looks way too cursed, way, way, way too cursed. Uh, so the reason, uh, the other reason I was also considering playing uh, the finals today. The other, so I went on a, let me check here. Let me count. Two, four, six, seven, eight. I went on an eight game losing streak in the <laughs> world tour. I made it to the final round uh, six of those eight times. Did not won, did not win once on those six times that I reached the final round on the, the world tour mode. So even though I still kind of want to play the finals, to be honest with you, that also put me in a bit of a sour mood, <laughs> not in the greatest of moods to play the finals either. So that is also the reason why I'm not playing this, even though I'd also love to. I'd love to play Helldivers. I'd love to play the finals right now, but for the sake of my mental and me not doing or saying anything that I'll regret on Steam, uh, sorry, on Switch, on, on Switch, on stream, Jesus. For the sake of me not saying or doing anything stupid on stream, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play either of those right now because uh, I'm gonna be real with you. It's I'm gonna say some stupid shit when I'm angry. Can get, cause I get angry. <laughs> nah. For the most part, I'm like pretty calm. I've been pretty calm on stream. Uh, but you know, I feel like I'm not gonna be able to help myself once I get too pissed off, and I don't wanna, <laughs> I wanna do. Don't want to destroy my streamer career before it even starts. <laughs> uh, so let's get onto. Oh, you know, what? I should have stayed open on Reddit actually. Cause I was going to check out. You know what? That's fine. Before we get, we'll finally get to Arsenal. But first, we'll do how long to be. <gasps> well, well, well. Look key here. Dark Souls. <laughs> so game is long. But first first playthrough. Hmm. I mean to be fair, once you know how to get through everything, it's not hugely long but I'm because I'm imagining that this is like because this is everyone's playthrough 
a lot of people's first playthroughs just the just the story itself if you're focusing on just the story it's still a solidly long game however if it's your first time there's probably going to be a lot that you'll need to look up and is a bit i can't lie the souls games there's a lot of runbacks i remember that for sure so there's definitely going to be a lot of time consumed with that it's i'm thinking 30 plus i'm thinking like oh, i'm trying to think back to when i played it first time because I don't know anyone that ever just focused on the main story. So I'm just going to go back to like, I'm thinking back to my first playthrough and I'm thinking like 30 hours plus minimum. So it's got to be like 36, I'm going to say 36. Uh, main plus sides. There's a lot of side quests. And again, this is going to be one where a lot of the side quests and stuff you basically you have to have a guide with you you have to there's just no way for you to get through certain quests without using a guide or having played the game already before there's just no way and i say this as someone who is a soul son like there are some there are just some quests that basically tell you fuck all <laughs> and you just need to use a guide or look it up because or have played the game before because there's just no way like it's literally impossible for a first timer to do this so it's got to be a lot because the side quests are long they're not like short side quests where it's just like one area here you go done in an hour or two like no the side quests will literally take place from like the very beginning of the game all the way up to like the last part of the game like just like literally just before the literal ending that's how long some some of the quests go yeah, I'm pretty like I'm pretty sure Soler yeah, Soler's literally goes up into like pretty much the lot like the second to last area. That's how far Soler's quest goes. So it it, it, it can be really long. Um oh, it's gotta be sixty something, hasn't it? It's gonna be like double. Cause it, main story. Cause the main story is already long by itself. And then if you take into account all the side stuff, it's gotta be like sixty. Um, it's gotta be sixty sixty one. And then completionist. So the thing about Dark Souls is, right? So sort of similar to Elden Ring. Well, all the Souls games are similar in this sense. You will be locked out of certain items and certain quests and like certain things every playthrough. So like, for example, in Dark Souls 1, in the DLC of uh, the, the Abyss, right? You can only choose one piece of gear as a reward right and there are three potential rewards which means you minimum minimum need to play the game like three times to get um oh god what was his name oh my god artorius yeah to get artorius's gear because you get his sword uh, you get his sword but all fucked up and then you get uh that lady's swords that uh you know that is a uh, Artorius's girlfriend. I forget what her name is. She's one of the other four knights. So minimum you need to do like three playthroughs. And yeah, there are other... and Because there's multiple endings as well. And there's multiple items. Oh, it's got to be a lot. It's got to be loads. It's a big-ass game. It's a big-ass game for what it was. Um, it's going to have to be like... I'm going to get 90. I'm going to like 93... User rating, this is gonna, I mean, it's, I don't think it won game of the year that year, because it's 2011, and I think like Skyrim, this little thing called Skyrim came out at the same time, but it was, uh, it's got to be 90, I'm going to put, I'm going to put 90, uh, since, I'm going to go spread, because I feel like, I feel pretty rock solid about all my guesses, to be honest, right now, but I think if I use spread, I can probably get slightly better than what I have. So spread. Oh, that is not what I expected. Maybe I drop down the completion. So, okay. I think I'm pretty happy with main plus side. I think that's the one I'm most, most happy about. So either I need to, either I need to increase main story or increase, I think I need to increase both actually, 
Let's go 39. I still think it's going to be 30. I don't think it's going to breach 40. You know what? Let's go 38 for main story. And completionist. Let's let's actually up that as well. Let's go. Let's just go for a nice round 100. Oh, maybe maybe a bit more. Maybe 110 or 120. Uh, you know, uh, nah, nah, I'm happy with that. Mm, nah, I'm happy with that. So main story for Dark Souls, I'm going to go 38. Main plus side, I'm going to go 61. Completionist, 100, with a user rating of 90. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. <gasps> not bad, not bad at all. So Dark Souls, main story was 42 hours, damn, even longer than I expected. Uh, main plus size was 60 hours, yeah, okay. And completion is 105, yeah, that all sounds right. And user rating was 92, yeah, that's, yeah, all of those sounds about right, yeah. I do have, yeah, I should have considered that literally it would have been first people's playthroughs. There's no way they would have completed the game in like 30 hours, yeah. And that does, that even 30 hours seems low, so yeah. 42, makes sense, you do, you... You do really have to like look it up a bit, don't you, to just complete the main story. And also just the difficulty, it's just... The game is hard. Change the gaming landscape for sure, this game. Shout out Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that. 91 so far. Dishonored, another game I've played. This is another good one. So, Dishonored. Definitely going to be shorter compared to, um, compared to Dark Souls. Much more linear, uh, level based. You know, no loot. Well, there's there is loot, no. Um, branching story paths, there is as well. So, completionist, I feel like it's going to be a long one. But main story itself, I don't think it was even. I don't think I don't remember the main story being that long. I'm pretty sure if you literally just focus on the main story, it can be like a single digit hour game like i'm pretty sure you can get this main story done in like eight nine hours but for the sake of like the average player i'm gonna guess if without speed running just focusing on main story probably like a 10 maybe 11 actually a relatively relatively short story but it's packed you know even though it's a bit of a shorter story it is packed solid story overall uh main plus size there is quite a few side quests per level I mean, there's that rat lady, the cult that you can help on the side, the gangs that you can mess around with. Plus, there's also all these secret missions with the uh, in your hub as well, like your hub uh, level before you start every mission. There's a, quite a few missions like that in that little area. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess nineteen. I'm gonna guess nineteen for that. And then completionist. Since there is quite a bit, and you, also, well, I do also want to say this because you can do like high chaos, low chaos ending, high kill ending, low kill ending, good choices, bad choices. There's probably this probably is counting to the completionist, so it's probably quite a bit. I reckon completionist is actually like it's going to be like thir high thirties, like thirty eight or thirty nine, because there's so many. Because like you can complete the mission in different ways as well, and you get different achievements based on the ways you complete the mission. So I'm gonna guess 30, 38 for that. Use rating. This isn't. This is another solid one. I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised with like ninety. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use ninety, but I'm gonna use probe. I feel like ninety might be a bit high. It's probably more like 87, 88, but ninety feels good to me. So probe. Main story is close. Main plus side is close. Completionist is close, and use rating is red, which means not close enough. Within 60% accuracy. Hmm. Sorry, I was talking to someone. 90 red well it's not gonna be any higher than 90 i feel you know no offense to this on it's solid game and i i personally would give it 90 because i love this game hmm 
I guess user ratings were a bit harsher than I thought. It must still be. I would have given it a 90. Uh, maybe 80. Oh, 80 seems so low. 80 seems low for this. I feel like oh, I love this game. And I feel like everyone else loved this game as well. It's not just like a, oh, this is a game that only I love. This is like a game that was like solidly loved. But it was red on 90. Oh, I'm gonna have to stick with 80 then. Uh, main story, you know, I'm gonna drop it down to 10 because it is a relatively short story. Main plus sides, I'll drop that down one. And completionist, I'm gonna drop that down one as well. Yeah, okay, I'm happy with those. So main story, I'm gonna go 10. Main plus side, I'm gonna go 18. Completionist, I'm gonna go 37. And use rating. Oh, that makes that's the one I'm uncomfortable with. 80 seems low, but 90 was red. <sighs> nah, critics, ah, critics, man. Maybe they were just too harsh. No, it's user rating. How is it? Oh, that feels wrong. 80 feels wrong. It feels like Dishonored was such a good game. How are people only rating it like 80 something? But it has to be because there's no way it's higher than 90. Like, I love this game, but it can't be higher than 90. Unless people are really, really love this game. Oh, I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to go submit. Okay. So main story was 12. Main plus sides was 18. Completion is a 37. And a user rating of 83. Solid scores. 83 though. Really guys. 83% for Dishonored. 83. I was expecting 90 or like high 80s. I was expecting like 86. No, not 86. I was expecting like 87, 88. I love this game. I swear people love this game as well. People, I've only heard good things about this game. And not just good. I mean like overwhelmingly good things about this game. I don't think I've ever heard a person say that this was a meh game. Like, oh, this was a good game. No, I've only heard people say like this was amazing, which it is. <sighs> Okay, I mean, I'm happy with the score, like my score that I have so far, but I'm not happy with the fact that people only reached the 83. It should be 87 and 88, really. This game deserves way more love from people. Go play this one right now, solid game. All right, next and final round, <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy. Well, action, adventure, open world role playing. This is going to be a big one. This is going to be a solid, this, oh, I could see this one being another 100 hour. I know that this game has a, I know this game has a decently long... I've never played it myself, I'll be honest with you. Never really been a big fan of uh, the Harry Potter world, but I've heard only good things about it. So I'm going to use Reveal, because I may as well. 44 hours. That sounds right from what people have told me who play this game. <sighs> Completionist. I mean, it is a big old open world it's going to be another 100 plus, isn't it? It's got to be 100 plus. Because I'm... Because I'm like looking at... I'm, think, I'm trying to think of what my mates are saying. I don't think... It's not hundreds of hundreds of hours, but it's definitely close. I don't think it will be... I think it's going to be like 80 something. It's going to be just a rough guess. Hogwarts Legacy. I know that's a big game and there's a lot of side quests. Oh, can you know what? Completion is. I reckon that I've not played this, but I don't I know. I don't know. Can you guys confirm? Is there like missions locked specifically to like if you're only in one house? Because if it is, it's going to be a hundred. It's got to be a hundred plus, hasn't it? Do I just go a hundred? I think it might be. Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah, I'll go a hundred. Main story. I've heard that it's pretty decently long as well not like huge or anything so i'm gonna go with like a solid 20 exactly user rating people like this game i don't think it's i don't think it was perfect or anything like from what i've heard i've heard that people who are fans really love it and even people who are casuals uh really enjoyed it as well i've not played it so i'm just gonna go with like the median of like 80 i think that's a pretty safe bet I mean, I've only heard good things about it, but I've not heard I've not heard anyone say Game of the Year shouts or anything like that. 
So yeah, I'm happy. You know what? I'm yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go. Wait, no. Why is he seventy five? Not eighty. What's... Yeah, main story twenty. Main plus sides forty four, which is revealed to us. And completion is the you know hundred seems a bit hundred seems a bit high. Let's go eighty two. Eighty two. Yeah. So main story I'm gonna go twenty. Main plus side which is revealed to us is forty four. Completions of eighty two and use rating of eighty. Oh, oh, oh. Damn, is this my highest scoring yet? 259 overall, shit. So main story was 27 hours. Oh, longer than I thought. Uh, main plus side was 44. Completionist is 69 and use rating of 80, which I got perfect. Damn. My overall score is 259. Is that my new record? It is. It is. Shit, good job, me. Damn, that is... Well, I've, I've gotten one, two, three... Four, five scores, perfect. Damn, good shit, good shit, me. Uh, I will say definitely this is yeah. So Dark Souls and this one are the ones that definitely carried me here. And I think I, and I feel like I got lucky with Hogwarts Legacy just because. Uh, well, I used reveal on that one, and I got people that played that. But yeah, Dark Souls I've played, Dark Dishonored I've played, Hogwarts is the one I've not played, but. The reveal was a good hint, for sure. 44%. Sorry, 44 hours for main plus sides, yeah. 80, yeah. I feel like I've... Mm, I feel like it should have been like 83, 85. I'm not happy that people only rated Dishonored 83. I feel like I should have deserved... It serves an 88, 89. And 92 seems about right for Dark Souls. Probably 93, 94, for being honest. But yeah, solid. Solid, 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 solid for me. You know what? Dark Souls, I would personally give a 95. That last 5% is like the lazy, <laughs> the lazy like drop, drag and drop enemy placement near the end of the game. If you play Dark Souls 1, you know exactly what I mean by the <laughs> drag and drop enemy placement because they really didn't bother at that point. The game, you know, the game not overall is still solid, but... <laughs> By the end of the game, when they when they just put enemies like yeah fuck it just let's let's just put them there, let's not bother about the lore or anything. Like the rest of the game is so immaculately handmade, and then <laughs> those last enemy placements are they where they just drag and drop them, and you can just tell. And they're literally you know exactly the place I'm talking about on that bridge, that fire bridge on those <laughs> in that lava area, where the enemies are literally just dragged and dropped, just standing there waiting for you. That one. And they're just staring at the front, like, come on now. But yeah, 95 my personal score. Personal score for Dishonored would have been 87. I think Dishonored is a solid game. Probably one of, the, probably the best. Is it? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you know what? Yeah. It is, of that, of the 360 PS3 era, the best stealth game. Of the 360 PS3 era, I'm going to say it. And Hogwarts Legacy, I never played, but I've only heard good things. So yeah, I can't really give a rating for that one. But yeah, happy with that. Happy with that. Uh, so let's actually talk about the bit I was <laughs> been wanting to do. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, your internet was off. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Uh, I'm not playing any games today. I'm going to just... I'm just chatting for today. But I will be playing games on Wednesday. We'll be playing Helldivers. Uh, hopefully, if it works. So. <laughs> I saw a post on here that I just wanted to talk about, which is going to be the main thing. Let's see if we can find it. Do, 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 do. Please, oh my god, please don't tell me it was deleted. It's actually a solid post. What games do I usually play? I usually play, it should be revealed here. Oh, and here as well. The finals and Helldivers at the moment are my two like current obsessions. But, you know, I'm up for playing whatever, whenever. But right now it is, it's mostly Helldivers and the finals. <laughs> oh. 
where is it? Where's Dan Post? There it is, yeah. Silly season. So yeah, at the moment, these are all the names. These are all the names that we're linked with uh, in a transfer market. And you know what? We should also get... We should also get, yeah, our squad up as well. We should also talk about it. I think I've already talked about it before. Uh, it's held up as my main game. Uh, I would say that the finals is my main game at the moment, but I do play. I'm playing a lot more of Hell Divers uh, on stream before. Before, I would say. Let me think. When was it? Probably like before April. I wasn't playing Hell Divers on stream, but I was playing it. But I'm playing Hell Divers on stream more. And I want to continue playing Helldivers on stream more. It's just that right now it's a bit broken on PC. <laughs> well, not broken, just not stable enough. But I definitely still want to play it for sure. For sure. So, like I said, these are the names we were linked with. Um, which other ones I know? So, I've not heard of this one. Uh, Mikhail Fey. Centre back Barcelona, not heard. Mark Mark Gehi, I've heard that we were linked last season or two seasons ago. Uh, Gonzalo Ignacio, centre back Sporting. I thought we were linked with another player from Sporting. Another like Diomande. I thought we were linked with him, not uh, Ignacio. Hmm. This one I've heard. Quite, but I think this was actually outside of uh, David Raya. Obviously, this was the first transfer rumor I heard of in the summer. Apparently, we already put in a uh, transfer. We already put in an offer for him for around this much. I think actually no, fifteen million. I heard left back, for, and he's currently playing for Turkey. If you've uh, watched, if you're watching years at the moment, he's very good, very very good. I rate him. I'm just not sure on. I'm not really sure and if we need a defender right now. I'd be more I'd be more focused on our midfield and attack if I'm honest, so I'm not sure really I'm not sure we should really be focusing on that. Joshua Kimmich, I've heard a good bit about this. He he's listed as a right back on here, but he's actually well he plays right back, but he also plays as a uh, CDM. So this is also this is one I'd also rate myself personally. I like this guy. I like Kimmich. Zubimendi, we have been linked with for a while now. I think this is the second or third time we've been linked with him now. 50 mil, Real Sociedad. Yeah, defensive mid. Arteta really likes him. We've, I think we went in from, yeah, this will be, yeah, this will be our third time going in from now if he wants it. But I'm pretty sure he's told us, well, not, he's not straight up said, no, I don't want to go over there, but he may as well have. He's basically trying to say that he wants to stay at Sociedad or he's old, he's holding out for a Madrid or Barcelona to call because he'd prefer to stay in Spain. So really, even though I'd like him, it does seem like he wants to stay in Spain. So maybe we should just move on, if I'm honest. I like him. I think he's a good player. But I do think he just wants to stay in Spain or... I mean, he definitely wants to stay in Sociedad for sure, at least. But he's definitely preferring to stay in Spain. I mean, Barcelona, Real Madrid, it's hard to... It's kind of hard to resist going to those clubs, isn't it? So I can't really blame him. Uh, Amadou Inanna, yeah, solid. Another one we were linked with. I mean, yeah, if, just a, if you saw how he played against us, even on the last day of the season, he was running circles around us. And he's, and he's a defensive mid that I was doing that as well. So he would be a fantastic Partey replacement. He hasn't quite got the um, the passing capability that Partey has. But physicality, in terms of like being like solid at the back, absolutely. He's got that physicality, he's young. Not injury prone at all. Got pre you know, pretty healthy. So this one's a, this one's a shout. I'd be happy with them as well. Uh, what is open on my stream? I'm currently on Reddit, on the Arsenal Reddit, on the Gunners. Do, 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 do. Just talking through the transfers, which I wanted to talk through originally anyways. 
see here. Because silly season is upon us. And that means random names will be thrown <laughs> out and about. <laughs> uh, next one. Bruno Gimaraes, not for me. Not for me. Personally. He's a good player. I just don't think he's worth the money. Plus, I'm still not quite over the elbow, if I'm honest. I'm a bit petty like that. I'm not over that elbow. I'm not happy about it. Uh, Douglas Louise, at this point, this seems like a... Uh, what is it? Da, 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 da. What do you call it? It's similar, yeah, it's a similar situation to Martin Supermendi, where I feel like, because we were actually, yeah, we've been in for Douglas Louise longer than we have from Supermendi. And I feel like it's time to let it go. <laughs> it's like, it's very, it seems pretty clear that, at least from my perspective, it seems very clear that he doesn't really want to be here. They're both solid players, but I feel like, yeah, neither of them really want to come here, which is fine. That's their choice, but sometimes you just got to let it go. Got to let it go and move on. Uh, Yusuf Afana, I've not... I've heard good things, but I've not seen anything myself. I've not watched any clips or anything, but I've heard a lot of good things. I've heard that he is very, very good. And apparently, yeah, this is the main thing is that 30 mil... Like apparently, like compared to from like skill point, from ability wise, compared to how much he costs, it's considered a bargain. Where he really should be like a 60, 70 mil player. He's got a release clause of just 30 mil, which is why a lot of people like him. But he is also really just solid from what I've heard. I've not seen enough myself, but yeah, I'd have to look him up more. But yeah, I can see, I mean, just looking at that price point, is that the lowest we've had so far? Second, third lowest, third lowest. Yeah, only heard good things, but I need to see myself. I need to watch some clips and stuff. But yeah, I've only heard good things anyways. Uh, Conor Gallagher, not for me, not for me. I think he's a decent player, but for that price point and for what I and for where like we are, I don't really think he works for us. Uh, Mikel Marino, I don't really know much about him either. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, sorry, no thanks, Jessica. Not interested in uh, that stuff at the moment. Uh, when I want to look into those stuff, I will do so. Just not right now. Do do do. Xavi Simons, yes. So, this is the one that I'm actually really interested in because apparently there is a there is apparently an opportunity for a loan for Xavi Simons. Now I know a loan is like people look at a loan and say, "Ah, oh, why not? Why not just get him? We have the money." Because apparently we have a two hundred mil uh, transfer budget uh, this summer, and if there's a player that's worth it, I mean, Xavi Simons absolutely would be young attacking young ultra talented attacking midfielder super talented and we have the money for him however we're probably not going to be able to get get him just probably, just cuz uh, i feel like he he's going to cost more than the 80 mil but apparently there is a rumor that he could actually be put out on loan again and hey we got martin odegaard on loan and then we bought him right afterwards. Who's to say we can't do that? Who's to say we can't do that? You know, get a loan in at Arsenal, get some good experience in there, get him to like the team and stuff. And then, you know, that's how we reel him in. And maybe we can, you know, start to, you know, since we loaned, since we uh, had him on loan, maybe we can convince him to lower it. It could be like, hey, look, we took him on loan. We paid his wages. You should lower the price for us. And maybe that's how we get Xavi Simons. I'm just saying. It's a shout. It's a shout. Uh, Eberichi Easy. Well, Eze is the proper way to pronounce it, but Easy sounds cool. Um, personally, a solid player. However, I'm not really sure how he would fit into our system, if I'm being honest. He, apparently, he can't. He play. I know he plays a left eight, and he plays on the wings. But I'm not. I'll be real with you. I'm not really that sold on him. I think he, I think he absolutely can go to a top club for sure. 
he'll absolutely end up at one of the top clubs in the world, 100%. But I'm not sure he fits our current system or style at the moment. But, you know, players have surprised me before. So maybe it can happen again. But personally, I'm not 100% sold on SA. Uh, Nico Williams. Very impressive. Very, very impressive at the uh, Euros at the moment. 60 mil though. And also he's currently on about, was it 200k a week? Which is a lot of money. A lot of money. The talent is there without a doubt. However, and he can, it's not just left wing. He also plays both wings, by the way. Do we want that kind of talent to be a bench player or like a backup? Because I'd, I'd rather not. Because with Xavi Simmons, he, I feel like he's... Xavi Simmons can play left eight, centre forward, left wing, right wing. So... We basically... Which is kind of why I'm more like leaning towards Xavi Simmons. Because he can play so many positions to... He can be cover for... He can... He has a starting position as a left eight. Is where I'd personally put him. But he can also play as a left wing, right wing. And as a centre forward, as like a false nine. So you're getting so many positions for one player. Whereas, so and he, so obviously, you know, he deserved the wages because he'd be he'd already have a starting position and he can cover multiple positions. Whereas, uh, I don't follow me back. Uh, da, 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 da. Not really interested in that stuff at the moment, as I said earlier. So, we'll not be looking at that right now. So yeah, so Nico Williams. He plays left wing and right wing. But he wouldn't I, He wouldn't start for me, just because we still got Martinelli and Saka. So I feel like even though he's an absolutely talented player, and I would love to have him. Ah. <sighs> I, mm, it's one of those weird ones like I want someone who's a backup but I also want someone to compete with both Saka and Martinelli and he would be that person but I, but we've, if we get a Xavi Simons so that'd also be really that also kind of do all that plus more and we'd only be paying what 20 million more oh, I'd go Xavi Simons personally but I'd be happy with Nico Williams as well uh, Victor, I've not heard of this player. This one's a new one to me. No clue. Pedro Neto. Mm, would love to, but you're injury prone. Made of glass, my friend. <laughs> you're made of glass. Absolutely going to be... You're absolutely a great player, but you're made of glass. I can't can't afford that right now. Uh, Victor Gokrez. One solid season. is not enough for me. I think, it, by the way, fantastic season. Was it like 40 plus goals? And then 10 plus assists? I can't remember the exact details, but... Solid player, fantastic season. However, you do have to put that Portuguese tax on it. It is the Portuguese league. Would he be able to do it in the Prem? I know he played in the championship before, which is very similar, but... The Prem is a different level. And we don't know if this is just like a one season kind of thing. Which is why I'm so... Mm. Listen. He could do it. He could be one. He could be one. But I'm not 100% sold. Just because it's been only one season that he's really, really blown up in. So I'm not 100% sold. Solid. Fantastic season, like I said. But... That's one season of evidence that we have. It's not enough for me yet. He could. I'd be happy to have him. As long as it works out, of course. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, in truth, one season is just not quite enough for me. The price tag itself is actually lower than I thought, 65 mil. But it's just the fact that it's just been only one season, which is the one thing I'm like, hmm... Will he be able to do it in the Prem? That's my one concern. If he can do it in the Prem, you know, he wasn't really doing 
he really wasn't doing anything that special in Coventry. He had... I think he did all right in Coventry, but he wasn't like anything special. He's been fantastic in uh, Portugal, obviously, but... Uh, it's just that transition. It's just every... Mm, you never really know. Going from one league to another is always... A, it's such a risk. And I'm not sure if this is going to be one of those ones where it's like... I know you can do it. Because I just don't know. I feel like with Xavi Simons, I know he can. With Pedro Neto, he's already playing in the league. I know he can. I'm just not... One season is just not quite enough for me, personally. It's not quite enough. He would be... Oh, it would be so good if it does. I feel like... Well, I'll get onto these later. I'll I'll get back to him later. Uh, Xerxes, yeah, not enough to, not enough for me. And the price tag, considering that he's had an okay season, but nothing, yeah, nothing special. Not really worth the fifty mil, in my opinion. Dominic Solanke, Solanke for forty mil had a great season. Similar again, not really again one season is not really enough Isak for me it, and I feel like for a lot of people is probably going to be the perfect choice I mean, it's the choice that makes the most sense but this is yeah there's no way it's going to be 75 mil it's going to be 100 plus if they want him uh, Sesco this one's already gone this should be gone and Victor Osimen. yeah that's not happening <laughs> so What I wanted to talk to you guys about is this. Of our centre forward, I'd either choose Gokrez, Isak, Osimen. Isak is the most obvious answer, probably the correct one. However, if you wanted to go for a high risk sort of one I'd probably go for Victor Gokrez because I feel if there's any one of them that I feel like is going to like randomly explode and just like burst into the Prem it's probably going to be Victor Gokrez even though he's only had one fantastic season at Portugal I feel like Isak would have a good season with us I feel like Osimhen would have a good season with us but it's going to be a flip of a coin on whether Gyokris explodes or is a quiet season. You get what I mean? Like, Gyokris, if we buy Gyokris, I feel like it's going to be he either scores 8 goals or 30 goals. Whereas with Isak and Osimen, I feel like that's 20 goals guaranteed. I feel like, yeah, Isak is like 20 goals guaranteed for me. Osimen's going to be like 20 plus. Yeah, both of these are going to be like 20 plus guaranteed for me of Isak and Osimhen. But Gyokres is the one I'm like, it's either going to be 8 goals or 30 goals. I don't know why, I just get that vibe from Gyokres. Because it's just too raw right now, because we've only got one season. But at the same time, that one season is like, it's stuck in my head. Because <laughs> he was monstrous during that season. But personally... This is the safe bet. This is the safe bet and the one that makes the most sense. As long as he can stay fit. <laughs> yeah. Midfield. If you haven't made it clear already of these choices. Get him on loan. If the rumours are true. I don't think we'll be able to just pay the 80 million. Even though that we'd be able to afford it. But yeah. Get him on loan and then buy him for cheaper. You know. Arrange some kind of deal while he's with us. And then put uh, Rice as a six. You know, and then we have an attacking... Then we have a midfield three of Declan Rice, Martin Odegaard and Xavi Simons. Come on, tell me. Tell me. Tell me you don't want that. Tell me you don't want that. Oh, and we also obviously get our cover for left wing and right wing and a centre forward as well with Xavi Simons. So yeah, come on now. Come on now. And then if not, uh, Fofana and Amadou Onana. 
personally. I feel like just give up on Zubimendi because I don't think he wants to be here and give up on Douglas Ruiz because I don't think he wants to be here. <laughs> and then for defender, uh, I don't really think we need anyone, but I guess, you yeah, know, go for Ferdi Kadioglu. I've not seen much. I've only seen the Euros, but he's been solid. Or get Kimmich because he can play right, right back and a CDM as well. You know, does it. But really, I don't feel like we really need a defender as much. I don't know. That, that might just be me, though. Me, personally, I'm more midfield or our attacking line, where I think we need more men. We definitely need more in the midfield and attack. But, hey, at the same time, we do have a bit of a injury-prone back line, don't we? So, yeah, maybe maybe a defender like a... Kadioglu would be a good shout as well. But yeah, that's my opinion on the, who we should of this list. Now, uh, Carl Hein, he's staying. He's on a new contract. David Raya, I'm surprised has not already been announced as our first signing. Ramsdale, sad to see you go, but it is best for your career to see you go. Uh, stay, obviously, stay, stay, stay. I've heard rumours of you leaving. You're already gone. Uh, you just signed a new contract. You probably will get one more year. We really should be replacing you, but... God, when you're fit, it's, a, it's hard to replace you. He's just so good when he's playing, but oh god damn it, when he just doesn't play enough. He's just not he's just not healthy. He's just too injury prone. He's a solid player, but he just needs just needs to stay fit. God damn it, yeah. Probably time to go. Stay. If a good offer comes in. If a good offer comes in, goodbye. But I'd like to give you one more year. But yeah, if it's, if it's time, it's time. Uh, stay, give one more year. I've, I still believe in Fabio Vieira. Uh, oh, El Neni, thank you for your service, my friend. Thank you for your service. Uh, Kai Havertz, stay, yeah. Declan Rice, obviously, stay as well. <laughs> Bukayo, stay. Bukayo Saka, obviously, stay. Uh, Jesus. <sighs> If an offer comes in that's solid, it's time to go. But I'd prefer for him to stay. I would prefer for Jesus to stay personally. Martinelli stay, obviously, in Ketia. I mean, yeah, he, it's he's out the door. He has to be. Uh, Trossard stay and Reese Nelson. Yeah, he's also, he's. I think he's also out this out the door. Uh, Oconquo, he's left as well. I think he's going Wrexham. Tierney, I he's pretty much basically said he's gone. Tavares. I'm surprised he's... I haven't heard that name in a while. <laughs> Lokonga wants to go. And Marquinhos. I'm still... I'm shocked that you're here as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, in terms of our defence, the only person really here... Well, Cedric and Zinchenko... Cedric and Zinchenko are the only ones who I feel like might... Well, Cedric's gone. Zinchenko might go. Which, I guess, yeah. In that case, it makes sense for Ferdi Kogio Kadioklu. Yeah. Because, yeah, this, like, this little triangle here, Saliba, Ben Wright, Gabriel, Timber, Kiryu, Tomiyasu, like, you know, this triangle of players here, keep. Cedric's already gone. Sinchenko might be on his way out if the buying rumours are true. Midfield. Uh, El Neni's gone already. Smithrow, I prefer to stay, but if an offer comes in, an offer comes in, and Xavi Simons is a hell of a replacement for him you know no offense to smith Rowe, but it's very clear that that's an upgrade very clear upgrade and i love smith Rowe. i love smith Rowe, but at the same time come on you got javi simmons is a, another level and forwards yeah nelson and, and Ketty have to go i feel like trussell will probably i feel like we keep trussell for another season or two 
and I feel like we'll pro he's probably going to go as well. And Ketty and Nelson will probably they have to go to bring money in because we I know we're also dealing with FFP and have and selling our like homegrown talents would be good for FFP. Uh, Gabriel Jesus I'd prefer to keep, but if we get a good offer for him, well, who are we to say no? <laughs> And then on loan, yeah, gone already. Pretty much already gone. I forgot he played for us. Pretty much gone already and forgot he played for us. <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah, actually, I've not heard any actual like transfer requests or anything yet for these three. I know that Nuno Tavares, uh, sorry, Sambi Lakomba Lakonga says he's wanted to go, but I've not heard of any like heard I've not heard any clubs say they want him yet. I know Tierney said he's he also wants to go, but I've not heard anything yet. Uh Oconquo, I'm pretty sure has gone to Wrexham already, and Tavares and Mokinos, I've not heard anything at all. From wanting to stay or wanting to go, I've literally heard nothing. Radio silence on these two. So yeah. I think that is it, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. So, yeah, Ferdi Kagioglu, Ferdi Kagioglu, Onana, Yusuf Fafana, Xavi Simons, Isak. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Kagoglu, Kimik, Anana, Fafana, Simons. Oh, Nico Williams also good shout. Oh, so God. Uh, this is a problem with transfers. This is a problem with the season. You never know. You never know. You just never know. It could be we get. It could be we get most of the players we want or we get none of the players on here and then everything still works out anyways or nothing works out you just don't know you just don't don't know oh boy so summer season is silly season when it comes to football but yeah i think the one that i'm most sold on though is javi simons if the loan rumor is true if we can get him on loan and then hopefully we can maybe try and convince them to lower that price to buy him permanently that's, this is the one I'm most convinced on. At least right now, anyways. So, yeah. <laughs> God, silly season. Am I right, guys? Bloody hell. Remember when people were literally looking at clouds and thinking of, like, oh, this player's coming here to sign, our, sign a contract with Arsenal because... <laughs> who was it? Yeah, because I think it was... Was it Benzema? Like, he posted a picture of the clouds and people were like, oh, he's on his way to London. Look at the shape of the clouds and stuff. He's coming here. <laughs> you can tell by the <laughs> Oh, football. Oh, my days. It really does make people do the silliest thing sometimes. Yeah. Listen, end of the day, as long as the squad improves and we are still competing and hopefully winning... A trophy next season. All's well and good. That's all I want. Just improve the squad. Win a trophy. Or two. Or three. Or four. Or five. Or six. Or seven. Or eight. Or more. Or all of them. Or none of them. <laughs> no, not none of them. Less of that. Less of, less trophyless seasons for, for us, please. More trophies and all. More trophies. Less trophyless seasons. That's all we want. We just want more trophies. As long as we stay winning, doesn't matter what transfers you get. Well, obviously improvements would be the best. As long as we are improving and we are still winning, and hopefully we get a trophy with it, I'll be happy. So yeah, it could be we get all the names on that list somehow if we spend a billion or something, or we get none of those lists on those, none of the names on that list, and we win everything or something. As long as we're winning, it really... Doesn't matter, you know? End of the day, as long as we win, 
doesn't really matter what transfers we get, does it? <laughs> uh, but yeah, improve the squad. Improve the squad, please. It's not, you know, last season it was very obvious who we was getting, you know. Declan Weiss, was, Declan, Declan Weiss, I can't speak. Declan Rice was obviously a clear improvement, right? This season is more about those like tiny, tiny details. There's not like a, I mean, other than the striker, there's not like a huge area to improve upon. And midfield, I guess, as well, because, uh, I mean, unless Partey stays fit, there's not really a huge, huge area that we need to improve upon other than striker. Because our midfield is solid when Partey's fit. And even when Partey's not fit, Jorginho is still a solid backup option as well. So yeah. This is going to be an interesting uh, transfer. Transfer window for sure. But yeah. That's it for today. No games today. Was not in the mood. But I think we had a pretty o overall good stream. Finally talked about the transfer which I wanted. The ins and outs. There's definitely some names on there that I didn't expect. Uh, some names that I've been that have been long time linked with us, which I think we might need to just let go of, let it happen. Uh, you know what? Another shout I'll give out as well. Another one I'd be happy with, Frankie De Jong. If we get a Frankie De Jong, that's another solid option from midfield that I'd be more than happy with. Because that, that name wasn't on there. But if it happens, hey, I'll happily take that as well. Frankie Dion. That's another midfield name that should be thrown in there if we want to get one. So yeah. I mean, it's silly season. Like I said, guys. Like everyone knows, summer season is silly season when it comes to football. So you never really know what players are going to come in, what players are going to come out. As long as we win and as long as we improve the squad, I'll be more than happy. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, afternoon, evening, night. I'll see you next time on Wednesday. And hopefully Hell Divers will be fixed by then. And we can actually do some Hell Dives, you know? And not just crash or even stay stuck in a loading screen for 20 minutes or however long it is. Because I still want to play. So hopefully, yeah. Hopefully Wednesday Hell Divers. But until then. Until then. Goodbye. Bye-bye.